Clay is material that we dig from the ground. It's the stuff that, of life in a way. It's the most abundant material in the Earth's core. And it's readily available and that's why so many different cultures have used it. And we, we, we dig this clay from the ground and we fashion it into objects. And then we fire those objects and they become permanent. There's one very important aspect of the use of clay as, as a material for this body of work, and that's the idea of transformation, which I think really is an analogy itself for how we deal with a body after death. But when you think about what happens to the body, there's an incredible parallel. You know, so many creation myths talk of the, us being made from the, from the earth, and then we, we, we live our lives, and then we're buried, we're reinterred back into the earth. Or the other option is if one is cremated, and this is this option in our culture, one is, one, one goes, one is put to the flame, one is burned. And again, there's this idea of transformation. So the, the parallel between this cycle of taking material from the earth and it, fashioning it, shaping it into something, and then itself going back into the earth in the form of you know, a burial or interring a scenery jar, is exactly mirrors this idea of, of transformation of us as people where we come from and our relationship to the earth that we stand on. The exhibition at York St Mary's is called The Matter of Life and Death. And it's an exhibition that I've selected objects from the York uh, Museum's Trust collection, uh, predominantly their archeological collection of objects, mainly vessels, which have been used to hold the human body in death. This one, this is a real beauty. It is. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this, I think, gives a really nice impression of, of what it will be like inside. So we'll get that really nice sense of the interior of them. It's got beautiful, beautiful decoration on the outside of it. That's absolutely exquisite. Many of the kind of prompts, inspiration, um, sources that I've drawn on in thinking through this body of work have come from museum collections. And so when the prospect of working with York and working with York's collection, which is a superb collection of archaeological artefacts, not just parts, but an you know, enormously rich um, collection. It was very, very exciting. So this is uh, early, mid-Bronze Age. So about what three four thousand years old yeah i mean bronze age you're looking at between about four to about two thousand years old and this probably lies somewhere in the middle so probably around about three it's at a time when you're starting to get a real development in decoration i had uh many wonderful conversations with archaeologists uh in york um particularly natalie mccall and it was a bit like being let loose in a sweet shop there were these wonderful objects that normally are behind glass, normally in cases, normally kind of on display but inaccessible. It was a great privilege to be able to go into the stacks of the museum and to pull down an early Neolithic, a Roman part, an Anglian part, and really have the chance to, to look and explore them, to pick them up, to handle them, and to, 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 to really engage with these objects. Um, and then to have the, the, the privilege of 
selecting them and, and bringing them into the exhibition. We talk about pots in terms of bodily terms, foot, neck, lip, belly, shoulder. The body itself is a kind of core symbol behind our understanding of, of, of pottery. The idea of a pot being a vessel, the idea, this idea of encapsulating and containing something. The, the, you know, the analogy with the body is that um, the body is like a physical container that contains and holds what people variously refer to as the soul or the spirit. The exhibition consists of work made from many different clays, porcelain through to impure, naturally occurring clays. So you'll go from something which is very refined and white and hard through to softer materials where there's a great deal of natural variation. Uh, that's something that interests me um, as a potter because material is kind of integral to, to the way I work. and. The same way is that you know a painter might have you know we use a full palette of colour, you know the texture and the quality of the materials is kind of core, you know core to the way in which I work through ideas. A lot of the work is made, as I say, from um, naturally occurring clays. They're not processed. They haven't gone through any kind of industrial cleaning and preparation, and as a result, they have. Um, irregularities and inconsistencies which create a, a texture I think can be a very very beautiful texture. St Mary's as a venue is, is, is a wonderfully appropriate venue. Um, it's a venue that is used for installations by artists at one stage, there was talk of me doing an exhibition within the museum itself. But St. Mary's came into the equation, um, and um, I don't think there could be, <laughs> I don't think there could be a much better venue because, uh, as we know, you know, churches are the kind of focal point of so many rites of passage to do with the the length of a life, you know, from from birth through to marriage through to death. As one person who is high up in a very well-known cathedral, I know, says, we hatch, match and dispatch people. And in that respect, um, St Mary's was um, a wonderful uh, em environment, f f incredible atmosphere, you know, this wonderful kind of longevity to be able to explore and work around this theme of death and containment of the human body in that space which itself is so kind of so resonant was a gift. I think one of the things I'd like people to take away from the exhibition is to almost demystify and face the prospect of death not necessarily for oneself, but in general, as, a, as something that is a natural part of life. It's not something that we should necessarily be fearful from. It is totally inevitable. There is no escape. And therefore, for me, looking at the rituals and art that deals with the subject of death is really a celebration of life. <laughs>